Welcome to Cloninger's Garage. This is the first video I've put together. This video is going to be on reloading 357 Magnum with 158 grain lead semi wide cutter bullets. Two different bullets. We have the blue bullets from Blue Bullet Company. The red ones are from Bayou Bullets. Uh, I will put together several different loads. I will use the two different bullets here, uh, and I'm going to load them all with uh, Magnum primers. H110 is the powder we're going to use. It needs Magnum primers to make sure that that powder ignites, fully burns. The grain weights that I will be using will be 15 grains in two different the two different bullets. Then we'll be using 15.6 grains of H110 in the two bullets. We'll also use 16.9 grains or really approximately 17 grains of H110 in that. That is uh, a hot load and you'll see that it gets some good velocity numbers. Firearm that we're going to be using to test this, my Smith & Wesson 686 Plus. It is a seven shot version. This is a four inch barrel version. Shoots very accurate in a lot of different things that I've done. Uh, have changed out the sight. Uh, the trigger is a little bit different. Uh, I've gone in and done some work to the trigger. The trigger is very nice. Very nice trigger pull. Very smooth. Very nice gun. This is the gun that we will be using to test these bullets. If you would like to know more about this gun, comment below and maybe I'll put together a video on that. I will also be using the RCBS Little Dandy. Very nice little powder dropper here. Very nice turn, very smooth. Uh, H110 tends to uh, meter very well. Without further ado, let's go ahead and get into the reloading, and then we'll get to the range after that to check on some accuracy, but uh, not focusing so much on accuracy, more on velocities. So let's get started. Uh, I've already had some brass cases. I've already put the primer in, already sized them, already belled them. Today we're going to be reloading uh, 357 Magnum H110. Two bullets I'm going to use here are both 158 grain. Okay, and we'll be using several different charges. Uh, we're going to have some charge weights of 15.6 grains, some that I've already made up. Also going to do 15 grains. This last load that you're going to see right here is going to be 16.9 grains. I will be using my little dandy here. This is rotor number 18. The previous two loadings were uh, for the 15.6 grains was the rotor number 17. And the 15 grains was for rotor number 16. Okay, I'm gonna take my little dandy. Very nice tool. Uh, if you don't have one, uh, look to get one. Really like using it. I'm gonna to go to each one, give them a charge. Very nice little tool. Very nice and easy to get this done. You do need to make sure that you double check your powder charges from these rotors. I have already done so. Make sure that it's dropping exactly what you think it's going to drop. Look and make sure there's powder in all the cases and we're good. Okay, make sure you use in this chart if you're using the little dandy. Uh, you can find this online. We're using H110, but 296 is also the same powder. We're gonna come over here and find rotor number 16 is the first one. And it actually drops at 15 grains. 
My next rotor at 17 actually dropped at 15.6 grains. And this last one is actually at 16.9 grains for rotor number 18. So we already have the powder. Case is ready to go. Go ahead and take the bullet. All right, I'm gonna check and see. I need to go down a little bit. I want to crimp into the crimp groove. And a little bit more. I'm not testing these with calipers because I've already know where on the bullet I want it to go because I've loaded several of these before. And then once you have it set, I just check them every time. And we will come back and crimp these separately a little bit later. The blue bullets seat to the same depth And we'll go back and crimp these in a second. I now have the crimp die in. I'm gonna take those same cartridges and now I'm going to crimp them. Now we have a nice good crimp around the edge. There we go, we're all ready for the range. The other two loads of 15 grains and 15.6 grains of H110, we're done the same way we just did these. As we get to the range, we'll start with the lowest, work to the highest, and make sure that we're safe. All right, 158 grain, blue bullets, H110, 15 grains. Well, 37. Well, 93. Well, 37. Well, 57. Hundred fifty eight grain uh, red by your bullets H one ten fifteen grains. Well, fifty seven. Well, thirty four. Twelve eighty three. 85, sorry, 1285. 1231. 1259. Uh, 158 grains, semi-wide cutter, Blue bullets, 15.6 grains of H110.
Uh, red Bayou Bullets, 158 grain semi wide cutter, 15.6 grains of H110. Sixteen point nine grains of H one ten over one hundred fifty eight grain semi wide cutter red by your bullets. Fifty-six, All right, we have 158 grain semi wide cutter from Blue Bullets over 16.9 grains of H110. 1402. Okay, coming back, uh, just looking at some of the groups that I shot. This was approximately 15 yards, uh, not my best shooting. And these are what I consider full power Magnum loads. Normally I shoot 38 special. Maybe I can do a video on some of those that I load up if anyone's interested. Just comment below if you'd be interested in that. First, there's a bunch of other uh, shots on the target. Uh, those are some hollow point lead loads that I had put together. They did not shoot very well, so I'm not including them in the video here. I'm concentrating on just the blue bullets and the bayou bullets, which are red. So right here, this first group here uh, was 15 grains of H110. This was the blue bullets. This was the red Bayou bullets with 15 grains of H110 here. Both of these groups are approximately four inches. This one's a little bit smaller, three and a half inches, um, if you're curious. Not the best of shooting. Uh, this was all offhand. Uh, mostly what I was looking for is trying to get velocities and stuff like that because I'm trying to put together a load. I could sit in a deer stand and shoot some hogs at the feeder approximately 25, 30 yards away. As we're moving on down, 
looking at some different groups here. This is uh, 15.6 grains of H110. Um, this is the blue bullets. Okay. That's approximately three inches there. Another set of the blue bullets. This is 17 grains of H110. Actually probably dropped about 16.9. I'm just rounding it to 17 grains. If you'll notice, both of the blue bullets groups uh, are a little bit smaller than the red bayou bullets. Uh, I'm not sure exactly why that is. Maybe it was simply me shooting, or maybe it was something about the bullets themselves. They're both 158 grain. Uh, they look very similar. Uh, the blue bullets are straight. The bayou bullets have a lube groove, but there is obviously no lube in there because they're powder coated. This is the red group right here of 17 grains of H110. And this one is kind of an oblong looking group there. This one is red Bayou Bullets, 15.6 grains of H110. I believe that the groups tightened up a little bit. The hotter the powder got or the more powder in there, the hotter the load. Uh, I think it did better, tightened up the groups a little bit in both bullets. And possibly, could be me, could be the bullets. Maybe the blue bullets shot a little bit better, but I don't really know. I couldn't say that for sure because these were all offhand. They were not on a bench rest or anything like that. Maybe I'll go back and shoot for more accuracy at another time. If you'd be interested in seeing that, comment on that below, uh, and I'll go back and look at that. Uh, this was my first deer rifle here, Ruger Model 77 uh, and 250 Savage. If you would like for me to do a more in-depth review of this, maybe shoot it a little bit, maybe work up some loads for it. Comment down below, uh, like and subscribe, and thank you for looking at my channel, and uh, hopefully you enjoy your day. God bless the USA.